Dude, yes, I met somebody involved. Um, I really want to get a pillow to see if my brain is okay with being whacked by it. You know, obviously, you know, I'm leaving a full contact sport. I don't want to get concussed by a stupid pillow, but I'm interested if I feel good. So I'm, we're going to see. Well, I'm kind of saddened that this will be your last interview as a fighter, you know, but I'm happy for you at the same time, you know, like at least, you know, when you want to hang up the gloves, you know, some, some fighters, it's just, I guess you see it a lot, right? Roxy, that they hang on a little too long and, uh, yeah. and then the kind of like the fans turn on them. Have you noticed that a little bit with oh, some fighters? You're right. Yeah, you're right. Like a lot of fans are like, Ooh, I don't want to see them fight anymore because they love them or, you know, exactly what you said. So yeah, I guess that's a, it's a, a good point. You know, I, I can sense, I don't, I don't, I do not ever want to be like that. So exactly right. And, but you know, you'll, you'll still have your fans. You'll, you'll still have the Roxy army with you. How are you going to keep them, you know, um, engaged, right? Cause they're going to still want to be a part of what you're doing. Well, I'm still going to be on social media. You know, I, I aim to have an entertaining life. You know, I'm still going to post stuff and I'm going to be in the jujitsu world. I love to do, you know, competitions that way. And, in jiu-jitsu so we'll see yeah the jiu-jitsu world is just crazy right now right just like there's so many shows so many opportunities yeah. to go out there and grapple and especially for yourself a uh, ufc veteran a, a ufc contender ex-contender wherever you want to yeah. call it you know um yeah so uh, is that the world that you're gonna head into after this yeah because mm-hmm. i was thinking like maybe Pillow fighting. Have you seen the pillow fighting thing? Dude, yes. I met somebody involved. Um, I really want to get a pillow to see if my brain is okay with being whacked by it. You know, yeah. obviously, you know, I'm leaving a full contact sport. I don't want to get concussed by a stupid pillow, but I'm interested if I feel good. So I'm. we're going to see. All right. That's, that sounds good. You know, I would like to see that. Maybe you could hold the belt in pillow fighting championship. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be awesome. I hope so. I really want to try it so badly, dude. Like, so, yeah. um... The retirement thing, you know, is this something that has been planned for a while? How long in your mind did you know that you wanted to hang up the gloves? Um, I knew like a year ago that I felt kind of like the time was approaching, you know. Um, I just got, got tired of waking up in pain every day and like, I don't know. So it just, but um, I really want to commit myself 100%. I wanted to reach 50 fights. So I made a goal, you know, an achievable goal. Um, I love fighting, you know. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to doing more jujitsu. So it's like, man, I just want to do jujitsu now. Like, I'm tired of punching people. I just want to do jujitsu. So for me, it's just like a morphing of activities rather than like quitting because I'm still going to be doing jujitsu, and that's really what I love the most. Is it more of the the aches and pains in the body, or is it more of the brain? What is it for you? I don't want to hit anybody anymore. Mm-hmm. It's just not fun. Yeah. So, what what when exactly do you feel like it it kind of clicked for you? You said like a year ago or so. So, do you remember the the exact moment? Could you take me through that? Um. Yeah, I went home from sparring with a headache, like. My headache, like my head hurts. Like this is not a good headache. This is like a couple more times I'll get a concussion headache. Like not good. So um, I started wearing headgear, and that solved the problem. But it really sucks to train with headgear because people grab it, and like somebody threw me down with my headgear, and I can't wrestle. So it's just not fun, uh, you know, to train with headgear on. So then I was like, all right, this is, you know, I need to make sure that I can put everything into this camp, and I don't want to be afraid to like not train with headgear on. It's just not fun anymore, you know, so I just, you know, I want to make sure that I get a a good job, you know, so I can support myself. But uh, yeah, it's time to change my daily activities. Were there any moments before that where you felt like maybe, you know, I should retire? No, No, there was no. I love, you know, I love what I do. Um, I always wanted to go full force, full steam ahead and see what I can do. And I always want to try my techniques in competition. That's like my big motivation for me. Um, but it was, you know, dang, I can't spar without headgear on now. Like this sucks. And then I was nervous to go to sparring for a while before I got my headgear. And, you know, I promised myself and my parents that I would, you know, 
really take care of my brain. So I don't even want to, you know, risk anything. So I guess you could say that I'm uh, campaigning, not campaigning. Um, I am aware of my brain health and um, yeah, the time has come, you know, I'm no longer a single woman, you know, I have a fiance now, so I'm going to get married in October. It shall be wonderful. And uh, start a light, you know, continue my life with him. Definitely. And definitely that's, you know, that's like the uh, happy ending, right? In a way. Yeah, you know, exactly. your happy ending, right? To your career. Yeah. That's great. That's great to see. Um, you're ranked number 12 in the world. You know, a lot of people will look at this and say, you're ranked, you're one of the best in the world and you're walking away from this sport. You know, some is there a little bit of part of you like, man, I still can do it. I still can go out there and, and chase that title. You know, I think some people believe that when they're ranked so high in, in the division. Honestly, I'm kind of bummed out that I fell out of the top 10, you know, with my last loss. It took me from like eight to like 12. I was like, man, like I wanted to retire in the top 10. But um, my friend Lauren Murphy is visiting me and she was like, Rox, how long have you been in the top 10 in the UFC? And I was like, about three years. Like I've been like four, five, seven, eight. Like, so that's pretty cool. And I fought for all the major belts. You know, I fought for Strike Force, Invicta, um, UFC uh so it's you know it's been awesome it has it has been awesome to watch too uh throughout the years i think a lot of the newer fans don't realize like what you have accomplished throughout your career do you have you ever run into that that they kind of they just know you from like your last maybe five or six fights they yep. don't know you from your longevity they don't know you from japan they don't know you about they don't know nothing yeah. about that of course i have those you know those fans who say i suck and yeah, I mean, I guess if you compare me to Joanna Yandrechik striking, I suck. <laughs> but, you know, I've done, done a lot. So it's, you know, it's been a journey. Yeah, you can look back and kind of sit back and, and reminisce and, and be proud of what you have done, right? Like, I think some fighters, you see it nowadays, they get into the UFC too fast. They don't really get much experience. And they maybe fight once or twice in the apex and then they get cut. It's like, that's not a very good journey to be on your journey has been very fruitful and rewarding yeah thank you your fight you know you still have one left right against casey o'neill uh they're they're kind of i don't know it's 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 a fight where you're ranked she's just got into the rankings right so in your view what do you look at how do you look at this matchup she reminds me of myself a little bit with her aggressive style just charge straight ahead try to take them down ground and pound like i love that um so I am excited to face her. You know, anyone I would, any matchup I would get would be tough. Um, I know she's young, you know, I have, you know, my own strengths and weaknesses, but yeah, I'm going to make it a fun fight. We are going to make it a fun fight. Yeah, definitely. And, and you get to kind of just, I think, you know, you're a martial artist, you know, you mentioned that earlier, like you get to practice things and you want to go into competition and, and try to uh, use those, utilize those skills. In this one, it's, you get to be completely free, right? Because there's nothing after that. Like, you, you could just try anything. You could try a double back spinning back fist elbow, whatever you want to do, right? Do Is there that yeah. kind of freedom to you entering this fight? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's happening. Yeah, because I'm going to, that's one of my goals is to try a bunch of stuff. Like, I have a few, I have a few super attacks that I am practicing in training and I have landed them. So those are some of my goals is to be able to do that and get like a nice highlight reel. <laughs> have you ever done a, a, a Imanari role in an actual fight? I'm not telling you. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just, you know, like Imanari roles is one of those moves that most fighters have never tried in an actual fight you know my and... boyfriend's really good at those oh is it okay maybe that's a hit i don't know but uh we'll see we'll see um now um you know there's a lot of fighters that are coming up and they seem to start younger and younger in this sport what is some of the advice you know what are some of the key advice you could give them you know from your years of experience coming up in this sport man um i would say you don't have to be a hundred percent well-rounded, you know? Um, I, I kind of wish that I had spent a little more time on jujitsu. Um, for example, Jillian Anderson goes and like submits everybody, you know? Um, I, I've been spending a lot of time on strength and conditioning and striking because those were my weaker points. Um, I grew slower in them than I would have my jujitsu and wrestling. Um, 
in hindsight, you know, I wish I had split my, split my time a little differently, but I would say do more of what you love because you're going to grow faster at it. That's what I would say to them. It seems like you do work with, with uh, kids, right? So, you know, you get to interact with them every day. And and from when you started to now, like watching like the next generation come up, is it amazing to you, like the level of talent there is, like how how good they are at such a young age? Because I'm ex- like my mind is blown sometimes watching these kids, especially in jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah, one of my students has an amazing open guard. Like, I watched two of my students fight each other, and, like, he could not pass her open guard. Her hips movements were just so good. Like, but, you know, then we get those people who are going to, you know, be the the young ones getting into the UFC at, like, 20 years old, you know, because they've been training for so long, and they're legit. So that's pretty cool. Exactly. It blows my mind. So in this fight, you know, you said you're going to be free. And, you know, what is the perfect ending to this fight for you like if a knockout you can, a knockout is the perfect yeah. ending i don't have a knockout on my record yet i would like that um but you know i'm not gonna hunt for it you know i'm gonna just do what i can do to win the fight and have a fun fight maybe like a like a, a mark hunt style walk-off knockout like one of those you know just yeah. like strolling you know take it like yeah. slow motion yeah yeah that would be that i'm would not be a nice. power fighter though but we'll see I've been yeah working. you never know perfect shot you know anything could happen um yeah a few more questions before i let you go uh mma fans you've been dealing with mma fans for a long time what do fans obsess about too much that fighters really don't care about oh i know um everyone always asks me if i think my opponent is going to underestimate me because i'm so nice or oh, I bet your opponent doesn't, she's not ready for you. Like she just thinks you're whatever because you're so nice. It's like, no, I'm pretty sure that they know that, you know, I'm a veteran and I fought really hard and they watch all the videos on me. Like, no, like it's hilarious to me that people even ask me that. Yeah, I'm nice. I'm smiling. But, you know, I've armbarred and choked people and TKO'd people with my elbows. So I'm pretty sure that they're taking me seriously. It's more like the fans who can't believe that I do this, I think. So that's that's one of the things that always like makes me laugh. It's like, oh, she's not taking it seriously, isn't she? I'm like, I think she is. But yeah. everyone always asks me that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a good that's a good one. Um, it, in a way, like an image of a fighter. Yeah. Can kind of, you know, make an illusion of them inside the yeah. inside the cage, which is, yeah. if that's why you're not a fighter, you know, most likely, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, you you mentioned brain health and the uh, and this is not about CT, but like PTSD. You know, from like injuries, bad weight cuts, even losses, and sometimes damage taken in a fight. Have you experienced this throughout your career and overcome it, or seen it in other fighters? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen all, all the things that you just mentioned. Um, I have some pretty intense memories and feelings about certain things, and I know after like if I'm put in a few positions that I might have you know gotten beat up in in the fight like a couple times I've had a reaction where I was crying and like just horribleness <laughs> um but uh it's usually it usually fades over time you know I can train and get better and move past it um yeah I just I think I need a break from competition because I feel like I've been under so much pressure, you know, I think a lot of fighters are because they just feel a lot of pressure. So I'm going to take a bunch of time, train a bunch of jujitsu and then get back into competition. All right. All right. Well, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what's after your fight, you know, on February 12th and uh, yeah, good luck to whatever you're going to do and whatever you focus on. And, and I, hopefully I will be able to interview you again. You know, it doesn't matter if there's a fight coming up, just whatever you're doing you know, when you move on with your career. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you.